Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be solving this system of equations with three variables and also three equations. So let's dive in. Now there are three possible ways that these planes, that these three equations that represent planes could collide. They could collide at one specific point, meaning that there would be one unique solution. They could also potentially have infinitely many solutions if they uh, meet at a line, or if two of them actually turn out to be the exact same plane, that's another possibility there. And um, they could also have no solutions. It's possible that these planes never all meet at any points that are the same as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and figure out which of the cases this one is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in a matrix. So I'm just going to write down all the coefficients and then the constants at the end. So our coefficients for the first equation are 1, 2, negative 1, and then 3 is our constant. Then we have 2, negative 1, 3, and 7. Then we have 3, 1, 2, and 4. All right, so my first goal is going to be to get these two numbers here, this 2 and this 3, to equal 0. Okay, so that's goal number one here. Now, how am I going to do that? If I multiply the first equation by 2 and then subtract the second equation, we can get a 0 there. So that's what I'll do. And then for getting rid of the 3, if I multiply the first equation by 3 and then subtract the third equation, then I will get 0 there as well. So let's do both of those things. Uh, okay. So here we're going to have, for the second equation, we're going to multiply, we're going to do 2 times r1 minus r2. And then for the third equation, we're going to do 3r1 minus r3. So 2r1, if we multiply 1 by 2, we get 2. Minus 2 is 0, so I'll put a 0 here. Then if we multiply 2 by 2, and then subtract negative 1, we get 5. If we multiply negative 1 by 2, we get negative 2, and then we subtract 3, the number that's in row 2, we get negative 5. And then if we multiply 3 by 2, and then subtract the number in row 2, well, that's going to be 6 minus 7, which is negative 1. Oh, in the first row, we can just keep the same. There we go. All right, and now we'll do the same thing for the last row here. Okay, so we're going to do 3 row 1 minus row 3. Okay, so 3 times 1 is 3, minus 3 is 0, which is the whole point of us doing this. Then 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. Then negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, minus another 2, is negative 5. And then 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4 is 5. Okay, so now we have a bit of a problem here. Well, actually, well, it's not really a problem exactly, but there's something I notice. I notice that this equation here, this second equation here, essentially is saying that 5y minus 5z is equal to negative 1, and then this third equation here is essentially saying that 5y minus 5z is equal to 5. Now that's a complete contradiction, right? This new matrix that we found is a contradiction, right? And so what does that mean if we have a contradiction? That means that there are no solutions, okay? So the answer for this system of equations is that there are no solutions. All right, because we have we have that contradiction there. As always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section, and we'll see you for the next one.